everyone, this is Casey with Utah Hunnings. Um, today I'd like to make a little video um, trying to explain the troubleshooting process that we have when we're trying to um, to figure out a uh, leaky awning and uh, try to explain to, to everyone kind of what to be looking for if you don't, um, if you had a patio cover installed at, a, uh, at your home or um, and you can't get a hold of the awning company that that installed it or let's say you moved into a new home and you don't know who who installed your patio cover but you might have a leak or something like that that you might want to take a look at um, we always recommend that you try to contact first um, the company who installed it to to make sure that they have their you know their warranties or guarantees um, typically with leaks uh, most awning companies only have maybe a one-year uh, warranty for leaks for them to come out and fix it for free um, at Utah awnings we have a five-year warranty just because we like to Especially here in Utah where we get a lot of snow, we like to give you guys a couple of winters uh, to make sure that everything's tight and everything's working right, especially with your roof and uh, especially in some of the situations we're going to talk about today to make sure that everything's good. Um, anyways, um, to get started, um, this is going to be for any um, aluminum patio covers or steel patio covers. Um, these are uh, typically, um, the, the panel that, we're, that we're, we're looking at today is called a flat panel. Um, there's lots of different types of panels that these awnings are built with. Um, it can be uh, some type of a V panel um, and another panel that, that we also install sometimes is what's called an insulated roof panel, which won't really have the same leaks that we'll go over today. It might have a couple, um, but we can do a separate video of that if uh, there's people out there that have insulated patio covers they, they want us to go over. Um, but today I want to go over um, these uh, corrugated pans, which, like I said, this is a flat pan, but it is a corrugated pan. So on top, um, it has a standing seam, and uh, and we can go over and you, and, and I'll I'll take you on top of the baby, of the awning to uh, to show you what the top of that looks like and how to treat everything from the top. So first off, um, this is gonna apply to all different types of panels. Doesn't matter what the shape of it. Um, all of these leaks are going to um, cross over to each separate panel. So if you have a panel that's more of a V shape or a W shape. Um, the same thing is going to apply to a panel like this. That's a that's what we call a flat pan. Okay. Okay. So what we have here is we have uh, I have marked with uh, painter's tape what our most common um, spots where we might see a leak are. Um, this is the best route if you do have a leak. Um, to just get some painters tape and mark where the water's coming from that way whoever comes out to fix your awning or if you're trying to, to look at it yourself um, You know what to do anytime you're fixing any of these problems You're always going to do it from the top side of the roof. Okay, you are never going to do anything from the underneath side Okay, everything is always from over the top whether it's the flashing the drip edge silicone or anything like that It's all gonna happen from the top that's one mistake that a lot of people make is they, they think that if the water's leaking, they can just throw some silicone in, uh, you know, right in this area or something, and that's going to fix fix the problem with the awning. So, but you have to do it from the top because if not, the silicone just eventually it's going to push its way out, and you're not going to be able to get a good seal on it. So everything needs to be done from the top. So what we have here is a list of, of different um, uh, spots. And so first we're gonna start over here and hopefully you can read the writing. I know it's a little dark, but so this spot right here, so this is gonna be a, uh, if it's leaking from in between the seam and it could be leaking, typically it's gonna start maybe about a foot or so away from the edge of the awning. And then it could travel all the way down that panel, okay? But it's always gonna be on that seam. So typically what that is, that's gonna be you're flashing up on top where the screw is holding that flashing down. Either there's uh, no silicone on it or the silicone has gone bad or maybe somebody used caulk instead of a pure silicone that just isn't going to stick very well. Um, it's pretty common for any companies not to put silicone on there um, just because if they do have to do anything, then they have to take silicone off all of those screws from up top. So if they can make it work without silicone, that's kind of the game plan with a lot of this stuff is, is the least amount of silicone you have to use to try to seal any of this kind of stuff up is the better. Um, you want to try to have everything as a continuous membrane, but sometimes when you get these screws, um, you just have to put silicone on them. So, but if it is leaking from one of these, just in the middle of the seam, uh, typically that's going to be your, a screw that's coming down. Okay. Um, 
So if it's leaking from the edge of your drip edge or your hanger right here, um, so typically that's going to be maybe they don't they didn't put flashing up there, um, or that the or your flashing is really really short. Um, or also maybe your, your patio cover doesn't have enough slope on it. So water's traveling backwards towards that. Um, typically that wouldn't be an issue as long as they, as far as leaking goes, as long as they put uh, a foam gasket behind it. So when we, when we put our, our hanger channel up, we put a foam gasket on the inside and then we, we snug our pans up, up against that. So that way, if water is traveling backwards for some reason, let's say you get um, some snow built up, some leaves or dirt or something built up. Um, it's common for people with a lot of trees to, um, you know, the, the, the leaves fall, dirt piles up, and next thing you know, you're, you're growing a garden on top of your awning. <laughs> um, and if that's the case, then the water could travel backwards or get stuck in there. And if there's no foam gasket, then, then water can leak through that, that spot right there, okay? Um, right here in between our, our fascia and the hanger, um, if it's leaking right there, typically that's going to mean that um, if, if they flashed it right, um, there's a chance that maybe where the seam, where, where the flashing overlaps another piece of flashing, that that didn't get silicone. So water is traveling sideways, getting underneath and, and traveling behind there. Okay, so uh, typically that's an easy fix. You just use silicone over the top of it. Again, we'll go up on top of the awning so you can have a look, see of what, what all this means from the top. So what you'd be looking for up there. Um, and then the last thing um, is going to be if it's leaking from back behind this drip edge. Okay, so if it's leaking from back behind, it's not even coming you know, in front of any of that. What that typically means is that the, uh, now this one is mounted on the eave. Um, so typically what that means is the drip edge on the house is either backwards, which means it's, it's over the top of the ice and water shield instead of underneath the ice and water shield, or there may be no ice and water shield in general. Um, it's, it's, I've seen houses where we'll, you know, we'll have, we'll have a leak like this occur and, or we'll, um, you know, when we go to sell the job, we'll see water stains. Uh, we'll see, you know, if it's a rainy day, we may even already see it leaking from there. And I'll post a picture of what that would look like. Um, but that would mean that, you know, sometimes there's not any ice and water shield anyway. You know, the contractor who did the roof didn't even put any on there. So what that's going to do is that's going to make it so water gets underneath the drip edge gets behind that soffit and then it gets and then it, it starts leaking through before it even hits the awning which is probably something that's already happening even if you don't have an awning up um, and you can you can check that on other spots on your house to see you know where you have a gutter up to see if water's coming coming back from underneath that drip edge um, and coming from that behind that fascia piece um, another thing that could cause that is is old roofing um, so if you have a really old roof where nails are showing where water can find its way through the ice and water shield, um, then it can also do that. So, so typically if it's behind this, this soffit, it typically means that you have a roofing issue going on that, that you need to fix. Um, um, if it is a drip edge problem, it could make all of these manifest themselves. Okay. Cause it could be getting underneath the flashing and, um, and causing it to leak from all of those places. Okay. So, um, so typically if it is leaking from there and it's leaking from these other spots, we'll actually leave these spots alone because we, we pretty much know what these are and we know that we can tackle those, but, but this, the, the drip edge might be causing the problem. So if it is leaking from the drip edge, that's the first thing we're going to try to fix. And the one thing to do with that is you're just going to have to have a roofer come out and, and re-swap out the drip edge on it or fix that drip edge, unless it's something you want to tackle yourself. But you have to put that, make sure that drip edge is put on the right way. Um, uh, um, it, sometimes you might try to call your roofer, especially if you like on this house, um, they did have a leak coming from right there. And I don't know if you can see, but there's some spots where you can see the stains even from underneath the drip edge. Um, but when they called their roofer to, to talk to them about the drip edge being backwards, 
um, they said that there was they didn't do it wrong or they wouldn't answer the phone calls or they would do whatever, which is going to be pretty common um, if, if you are trying to get your roofer to come back and do stuff. So don't be surprised if it's something that, that they don't want to admit to or they don't want to do that. But the solution to the problem actually is, you know, you got to switch the drip edge on it, okay? Um, and so that's what we had. Uh, uh, a roofer came out, swapped out the drip edge on this um, to make it look like it's, it's uh, to, to, to put that back on correctly. Okay. Um, and um, I will get a video or some photos to show examples of drip edge that's been installed correctly or backwards. So you guys can know what to look for and know what that looks like. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the top of the awning and we'll uh, take a look at it So before we do go up on top I do want to maybe cover a couple other little spots that that'll be easy things to fix and easy easy, easy things to to uh, to uh, um, Address yourself on the awnings and to uh, to troubleshoot what's going on with it um, But first of all, I do want to note just how awesome these guys' view is just looking over that Utah lake on this patio. So they were super excited to get this awning installed so they could enjoy their deck and enjoy their views. Um, but the one thing that, uh, a couple of things that are easy are gonna be, if it's leaking um, on the beam at all, if you see water coming down, um, Um, typically that's just going to mean that there's a, a screw on the top that either what well, didn't get tight when we put these screws down into the beam um, they have a, a rubber washer on them um, that uh, that makes that seal tight and uh, sometimes if that if that didn't go, get in tight or maybe uh, whoever installed your patio cover maybe they didn't use those washers and they're just uh, and they had to put silicone or something over maybe the silicone wore out or maybe they just didn't put silicone on it in general and it just needed to be done. Um, another thing is gonna be if we look at the gutter, um, if it's leaking from inside. So if it's leaking from right along here, like, like it's backing up and coming out the back side of that, um, that's basically gonna mean one of two things. One, um, you can tell that, you can see that, that theirs is Theirs has been kind of leaking a little bit. Um, basically, it's just the gutter's not clean. Um, so where that where that downspout is, um, uh, leaves are so backed up in there that it just won't drain right, and so water is getting backed up in there and it's draining out that side. Um, if your gutters are clean, um, what that typically means is that the the pans were installed too. Um, they didn't overhang past the lip of that gutter at all. So what's happening is water is, as it's rolling, as it's draining into the gutter, it's rolling back similar to if you were trying to pour water out of a cup, um, it would, uh, that water kind of rolls back. That's what it does. And so it'll roll back and then leak from there. So when the awnings are installed, yeah, you should have about at least a quarter of an inch to half an inch um, of overhang of that panel into the gutter, or it could roll back and leak from back behind there. Um, and I know that's kind of an issue with a lot of awnings because it's so tight in there with this type of awning style that, um, people want it, uh, as that, that gap between the pan and the gutter to be as wide as possible, um, so they can clean it out. And, and, uh, there is no, no real solution that has been made that couldn't just cause more problems. I mean, people have tried to put leaf guard, stuff like that in their wire mesh, which has worked for some people. But some people that could uh, make the problem just worse, like stacking up leaves and causing it to roll back like that. So, um, but the biggest thing is just keep your gutters clean. And uh, and some older awnings, um, that gutter is uh, is isn't quite as wide. So it's you know might be like two inches wide instead of three or four inches wide, um, which could make it harder to clean the gutters out. But these new gutters, they're they're making them a little bit wider and making it easier to clean out. So, um, so that's something, if, if it is a big issue, maybe you could have an awning company come swap out the gutter and fascia with new stuff that's wider that might be easier for you to clean it out. Um, but it, it all depends on, on your level of annoyance with the leak. Like this is, a, it's not gonna structurally compromise anything, um, having that, that water leak out. Um, 
especially if you live somewhere where the water's not going to freeze. Um, um, but, but if it's something that's bugging you, like you're walking out, like these guys, you know, they have this deck. So, you know, if the water leaks right there, they're probably not too worried about it because you're just kind of going to drip down 15 feet onto their grass. Um, if it's something where you're walking in and out of a lot, um, when it's just snowy and the snow's melting um, and it's nice outside and you're walking in and out, it might be dripping on you as you come in and out. So fixing something like that is going to depend on your kind of annoyance. Um, this stuff that we were going over um, here, um, that could cause structural integrity if water's getting into that fascia board and rotting it out. Um, that could cause, um, yeah, some structural integrity in your awning to rot that wood out. So those you do want to make sure you're getting taken care of. Okay, let's go on top of the awning. Okay, so here we are on top of an awning. Um, so here you, you can see that there's this flashing that's tucked up. Typically this is, gets tucked up underneath the drip edge of the house um, instead of putting new drip edge on. Uh, this one the roofers put a, a new drip edge on and we have to come have them come back out because what they did is they put the they put this drip edge on that's basically a continuous uh, membrane so it's it's a custom bent up piece of metal but when they came out um, you can see they just put the they didn't tuck this up underneath the old shingles or the old drip edge or anything like that they just put it right underneath this this uh, this layer of shingles and now water can get in this this spot right here and now it can kind of get under everything so uh, this is something the roof is have to come back out redo all this drip edge all this flashing and um, and, and do it the right way. Um, this person's roof is pretty old. Um, you'll be able to see a bunch of wear and tear on it. So it is something that eventually they're just gonna have to get a new roof. Um, and when they do that, they're gonna have to take out that second, especially with the, when, when they shingle over a, an existing layer of shingles, um, that also, uh, it is a little bit hard to get, you know, that drip edge to tuck under everything because the existing drip edge is already going over those. And so you have to take that old drip edge off. Um, but, um, a couple spots that we talked about, this is where there's a seam in that flashing. So if, if there's no silicone right there and that silicone job, again, these, the roofers came out and did this, but, uh, that's, that silicone job could be done a lot better, <laughs> um, for sure. So they'll have to clean that up. It is working. It's not leaking from any of those spots. Um, but you do want to make sure that's a nice, clean, flat, smooth, uh, silicone job, or you can even, uh, silicone underneath the flashing um before you put it on so that it sticks together um sometimes it can work itself out as water is kind of pushing into that gap uh where if you silicone over the top um the water will kind of hit and flow over the top um aesthetically not as pleasing um you know as doing it that way but it could work better so depending on your situation if if uh, you know you got a window above and you can see it or um maybe you got a second story these guys you know live you know in the middle of the mountains so there's nobody Nobody looking, you know, looking around at the top of their, their awning to see what's, what's, <laughs> what it looks like up top. So, um, so yeah, so the roofers that came out, um, you know, uh, doesn't look like they did the best job trying to get that up. So we have to come to have them come back out and redo all this. Um, so it, it is still leaking. Um, but it, it, it's, it's hard to find a roofing company that'll come out and do small stuff. So the ones that are, that are willing are typically willing to work with you on making sure they're learning how to how to how to work with with this kind of material because it is it can be new for some of the for some roofers and some uh contractors trying to do this kind of stuff so uh the other thing we talked about was you know these screws um some of them are, are were silicone some of them weren't so we'll go ahead and and hit the rest of these screws with silicone um sometimes if if these screws are are uh too close to the edge of the of the flashing um it can cause that to leak as well so even if that's like a tight a tight fit right there um if it's if it's too close to the if it's too close to the edge right here um then yeah then that water will get in even if it's silicone around it it might be be too close and kind of get in there and, and and get underneath so anyway so we're gonna go ahead and uh and hit the rest of these with silicone uh make sure those aren't leaking um and um and that's it for the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions uh, um, on troubleshooting. Uh, let me know if there's any other uh, leaks or anything you want me to go over. I will be making videos on stucco. Um, I know a lot of 
uh, uh, homes are attached to stucco siding if you have like a two-story home and the awnings go in the middle and uh, and how to address those types of leaks so but if you have any questions comments uh, let me know in the in the comment section or if there's anything else that you want me to uh, to go over um, and uh, and hopefully when we get the uh, roofers back out to get this all redone um, we can maybe shoot another video of, uh, of showing how everything's done needs to be done the right way okay all right thanks everybody and we'll talk to you later uh, one other thing I do want to mention is that um, this material um, is made to, depending on, on where you're at, um, so here in Utah, um, you know, typically we have, we'll have like a, a, you know, a 30 to 50 to 75 pound snow load, depending on where we're at, um, and we have to use a, you know, thicker gauge of materials and stuff, but they're only made to hold, you know, you know, 30 to 75 pounds of snow per square foot and but not you know 200 pounds of person walking on it so if you do end up having to get up on here to do your own own uh um to, to fix your own awnings you know you can get some sheets of plywood um lay something out um that's going to spread the weight out um so you don't bend any of these any of these locks um going down um because you will if you bend them if you're just walking along the beam um, you can see where all those screws are out there at the end. Um, the beam will be fine just as long as you don't stand on top of those um, those ridges. But if you kind of squeeze your feet and it's pretty tight, um, you can you can walk along that. But other than that, uh, don't be walking or stepping on the awning um, because you will bend these. Especially if you're in an area where you don't get snow, um, they're going to use the you know if you're in your you know Las Vegas, Southern California areas, Arizona where you're not getting any snow um you're going to be using a lighter gauge material and it's going to bend a lot easier so you really want to make sure you're kind of staying off off the top of this as far as bending it goes and again first step should always be calling the awning company or patio cover company that installed it um to come out and take care of it because they know how to how to walk on it they know how to treat it and a lot of times you're going to have a warranty okay and uh there's some uh that might come out and do it for a fee uh, one thing with contractors is, is sometimes it is hard to get somebody to come out to, to do a little job that isn't their own because they can inherit those problems that might come along with it. And so, um, so it's, you know, kind of good luck trying to find somebody that'll just come and work on your patio cover or your roof. Um, because then they inherit those problems if, if there's anything going on and, and they like to get big projects where the big, the big money is made. So, um, uh, we try to help out when we can. Um, if we're not too busy, we'll get out, take a look at other, other people's awnings, other people's patio covers. Um, but sometimes it just it just turns into a into a big mess. So, um, but the point of this video is just for those of you uh, those of you out there that um, you know want to try to tackle it on your own, um, so you kind of know what's going on, how to troubleshoot everything. Like I said, you want to try to do everything from the top of the awning, um, and, and no no silicone. Uh, or anything like that on the underneath side okay um, if you do do silicone it or need flashing or anything like that um, and, and you need to silicone anything make sure you're using 100% silicone um, don't use a any kind of a caulk or anything like that um, make sure it's something that's gonna have a, a um, that's you know made for an outdoor water water situation so anyways any other any questions comments uh, let me know in the comments um, and, uh, I'll try to answer them if you have any, or if there's any other questions you have about awnings that you want me to shoot a video on, um, explaining anything, I would love to do that. So also leave that in the comments. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.